The architect is the person who is putting together a lot of different elements at any one time. Ultimately, buildings get built, buildings have to withstand forces. That is all about physics. As long as we're on the, the face of this planet, we're, we're all dealing with gravity all the time. Everything is about transferring the load from wherever it is, up above, down to the ground. Anything is going to fall at 9.8 meters per second squared. You're looking at balance. As we sit there drawing something or making a digital model, we can completely ignore these forces. But all we're doing is creating a representation of something that is eventually going to be built. And that is going to be subject to the forces of gravity. The way that we transfer that weight is through the vertical elements, or the more or less vertical elements. So that's why you see uh, so many vertical elements here, because the building um, is obviously not going to stand up by itself. You have to have some framing system in place to um, counteract that gravity. And then we think about how we do that working with the ways that gravity will affect the horizontal or other elements that we're trying to carry. Well, if we're talking about structural forces for buildings, we, we do have our loads, what we call our dead and live loads. Dead loads are basically the loads that are not going to change the material weights. And then our live loads are going to be things like people walking on the building. That's a live load. And we calculate for any building what those combined loads are going to be. The different types of spaces are going to require either walls or beams or columns. And just, so just trying to figure out how you're going to transition from one system into another. We have to make sure that we have sufficient structure to carry those loads all the way to the ground. Each column or each wall can only carry so much. So we have to figure what that is and then we have to distribute the rest of it to another wall or column or row of columns or something like that. It doesn't have to be a straight path, but we have to be able to trace it all the way to the ground to disperse those forces into the earth, often through a foundation or a, a footing. So I, I understand how you're spanning what would be a, a roof on top of here, carrying those loads over to these columns. So that's our gravity condition. Yep. We have two lateral conditions, right? Mm -hmm. The square column, mm -hmm. it can go in that direction or it can go in that direction. So first of all, what's keeping it from going in that direction? We have to be looking at our, at our lateral loads, our forces from winds or from uh, the movement of the earth and understand how our buildings are going to resist these forces. And that's going to require understanding forces from the side and understanding how to resolve those forces again back down to the ground. And we do that through triangulation of forces, following the vectors and making sure that through some sort of moment resisting frame or, or braced frame, we can resist those forces and triangulate them down to the ground. And, and there are certain equations that we use for that. And you have these elements that are representing uh, masonry, concrete potentially. And this one I'm not too concerned about because it's tied into your foundation mm -hmm. and then it's also triangulated, so that's, it's incredibly rigid. I'd have to really pull on that. Of course, this one, on the other hand, it can move pretty easily. Yep. In that. Now, we're fine in that direction. Right? <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> but this is the question. So you pointed out that it's resist motion. Come from here or here, or triangulated back down to the ground. Yep. So we're good there. Yep, but in this direction, you can see that the base is extremely narrow, so there's not a lot of material resisting any movement in that direction. But if we added a piece here, mm -hmm. then that would become yeah, absolutely rigid, right? right. Another set of forces in, in the role of uh, gravity is in the cantilever. The basic idea of a cantilever is a horizontal surface that hangs out there without any vertical at this end. So here's my vertical, here's my horizontal, here's the part that I want to hang out. So I bring my, my horizontal piece out here, but I know as soon as somebody walks over here, I might be able to get this really balanced for a second. So we've got our little point here, we need to bring in a little another point somewhere back here. We have very general rules for the cantilever. We say there's a two to one ratio of what has bearing and what's cantilevering, one to two. And I've got a wall and posts holding this 
roof 10 feet, I can probably overhang it five feet. But we can challenge that quite a bit as we start to understand physics more and we see buildings that have what appears to be much greater cantilevers than that. If you play with weights and your pencil and stuff and you start to stack things here and you stack some other things here and it balances out even though the things are kind of different. It's certainly essential that any architect has both an intuitive understanding of gravity and one that's based on the study of structures. I want to identify the problem. I want to be involved in it. There's no question that one could not succeed as a practicing architect without an understanding of physics and, and gravity and lateral loads. And then I'd be happy to grab all the technology I can find or the science or whatever to try to solve that problem or just understand, right? We just want to understand the way the world works. Mm -hmm.